sharing and closing. And our song is one some of you might remember this chat. <laughs> Chatter's name was the Lord Sheep. And he did some really good videos with songs. Once you see this one, you can go from there and find his YouTube channel. And they're all good. We're going to listen to this together. I'm not sure if it plays in the room or not. And then we'll type done.
to the King eternal. You know what I love about the Lord Sheep's videos? He always ends them the same. Paid in full. And the price of our sin was paid in full. Somebody can pin it for you so it'll stay there if you want. So... <laughs> It's once and for all. We don't earn it. We receive it. And we thank God for it. Let's pray. Father God, we bless you in this day. We thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you for your care. We thank you for your correction. And we thank you for your compassion. We thank you for this time we have chosen to spend gathered around your word. Please be with each one of us in the area of our greatest need. And Lord, may the meditations of our hearts be pleased in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. So today is the day after Christmas. Or is it? Well, yes and no, and certainly emphatically not the day after Christmas. Christmas is not actually a day, a Boxing Day. It's the celebration of the birth of Jesus. Historically, the birth of Jesus is a fact which can be proven, but the life of Jesus and with his birth, that's a rhetorical question. We know the answer is no, it definitely did not. However, many in the secular world, yes, it did. So this is over. The manger scenes, if there were any, will be put away and they will be forgotten until next year. Decorations will be put away and Santa Claus will go back to the North Pole and Christmas is over. Stores. We have a markdown sale today and probably this whole week. And a few celebrating New Year things will begin to appear, but probably also stuff related to Valentine's Day because after all, that's the next money making holiday. Yes, and some may hide Easter eggs. Isn't it interesting to think about it this way, though? Now, some churches and in some countries, which, by the way, in those countries as well as in ours, the secular culture there also follows whatever the traditional church traditions have been, which is interesting in itself to ponder. But in those countries and in those churches, Christmas will not be celebrated or the birth of Christ will not be celebrated until January 7th. Boxing Day. Epiphany. The Feast of Epiphany. 
Orthodox and Coptic Orthodox churches use a different calendar for their religious celebrations. The Orthodox Church in Russia, in Serbia, in Jerusalem, in Ukraine, and in many other countries use the old Julian calendar. And people in those churches and those countries, the secular people as well as the religious people, celebrate what we call Christmas on January 7th. The Coptic Orthodox Church celebrates Christmas on January 7th. The Ethiopian Orthodox Tawaho Church also celebrates on January 7th. Were you? And after Advent, which we've been talking about, Advent, remember, means simply means coming. So the first coming of Jesus was when he was born in the manger. But actually, it was when he was conceived in Mary's womb. But the first coming that we celebrate was the birth of Jesus. But we also have been looking forward to the second coming because he's coming again to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. After Advent, traditionally Christmas celebrations and often a feast started on Christmas Day and lasted for 12 days. So those were known, that's where you got the 12 days of Christmas. And those celebrations finish on the evening of the 5th of January, which is known in some places as the 12th night. It's all just interesting. And throughout history, modern history, the 12 days of Christmas were a time of feasting and fun. And following 12th night on the 6th of January is Epiphany, when people remember the wise men, also called the three kings, who visited Jesus when he was a baby, but more likely two years old, and the baptism of Jesus when he was an adult. And an adult is not, a, not 21, 13. There's a song that we sang when I was a child, and it talks about the uh, traditional church season. I wanted to just read it to you, because I, I think of it often, and it helps us um, celebrate the life, the whole entire life of Jesus. So that will remind us that, yes, Christmas is over, but Jesus is not gone. It says, Advent tells us Christ is near. Christmas tells us Christ is here. In Epiphany, we trace all the glories of his grace. Then three Sundays, well, then mine goes, then three Sundays will prepare. But it says, those three Sundays before Lent will prepare us to repent. In Lent, we may begin earnestly to mourn for sin. So in those liturgical churches during the period they call Lent, which is between Epiphany and Easter, it's 40 period. They really fast and pray. Holy Week and Easter then tell who died and rose again. Oh, that happy Easter day. Christ is risen indeed, we say. Yes, and Christ ascended too to prepare a place for you. So we give him special praise after those great 40 days. Then he sent the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost with us ever to abide. Well, may we keep this in time. Last of all, we humbly sing, Glory to our God and King. Glory to the one in three feast of Trinity. Isn't that just interesting to think about? It's, and, and it's so interesting that secular culture follows religious culture, the Christian culture, in many countries. So the liturgical churches and a lot of churches have been doing Advent that aren't necessarily, quote, strictly liturgical. Uh, the liturgical churches follow that calendar of church seasons, and each one focuses on a portion of the life of Jesus. Not necessary at all to do, but it's not a bad idea either to have a sort of a, <clears throat> you know, a head for focusing on different parts of his ministry on earth. So my question for us is, for each of us individually, Christmas and yesterday, or will we remember all year long? Will we choose to abide in truth? And where will we focus in the coming year now that all the little Christmas stuff is going away?
I and some of my local friends, as well as people around the world, do not make a New Year's resolution. And by the way, next time we get together, it will be 2023, believe it or not. Instead of making New Year's resolutions, we pray and we seek God for a focus word for this year, for that year. I have shared before, but it's worth considering on this day after Christmas and the last Monday in 2022. So what we do, me and my friends, or the people I know that do it, is we either keep a journal, and the title of my journal entry, oh, hey, Trinity, my title of my journal entry this year was my focus word, which was shift. I had no idea. We either keep a journal, or in my case, I use notes on my computer and phone because I can take try to thought down anywhere I am. Uh, perhaps some of you might consider trying that this year. We have between now and next Monday. Monday will be, is it Sunday or Monday is New Year's Eve? Uh, maybe some of you already do something similar and there's no right or wrong to do it or not. Okay, Saturday, but before we meet, we meet next time, it'll be the new year. Here's what one author shared in, a, in an article called What's Your One Word? Saturday is New Year's Eve, and Sunday is New Year's Day. Is that right? I don't have a calendar. I've got it. Okay. So Monday or the day after. The day after New Year's. Maybe, this author says, maybe you're in a season of, of abundance. Maybe everything's just going just right for you in your life right now. You have favor and delight, and you have more opportunities than you know what to do with. Now, Dodie note. That's a fun place to be. Anybody there right now? Got perfect life? Maybe, and I would say I'm probably more likely in this, maybe you're in a state of grace. You're learning your limitations. I'm getting older. Some of you don't know that, but I'm fairly old, and I have limitations of things I can't do anymore that I used to do without thinking about it, such as getting up off the floor, or even sometimes getting out of a chair, or even having my arm work. <laughs> so um, maybe you're learning your limitations. Maybe you're discovering weaknesses, and you're awakening to God's provision in the midst of that. And the Dodie note is that's an enlightening place to be. Sometimes it's difficult, but it's a place of closeness with our Abba. Or maybe, maybe some of you are in a season of adversity. Marriage, your finances, your health, your job, or some of your relationships that you cherish are crumbling. And that's another difficult season. It's also one where we learn to trust, lean, and rely on God in a special way. If you haven't ever been there, you probably will at some point. Because life ebbs and flows. No matter what season you find yourself in, your Heavenly Father wants to speak to you. He, God wants to speak to us every single day. In fact, he, I believe He wants to speak to us every single moment of every single day. In the small things and the big things, in the happy things and in the sad things. The beginning of a new calendar year provides an opportunity for reflection and vision casting. This is the season to both look back and press forward in our relationship with God this week. One scripture I love is found in Proverbs 29, 18, and the Amplified says, Where there is no vision, which means no, re re no revelation of God and his word, the people are unrestrained, but happy and blessed is he who keeps the law of God. And some of them say, where there is no vision. For lack of a vision, the people perish. I think that's the same verse, but a different translation, or it could be a different verse. And another verse that's really cool is Proverbs 16, 9. We're talking about planning, looking back, looking forward, seeking what the Lord has for us. And Proverbs 16, 9 says, the mind of man plans his way, but... 
The Lord directs his steps. Day by day, moment by moment, when we are surrendered to the Lord, he will <clears throat> lead us, guide us, and direct our steps. And again, in Psalm 37, 23, we read, Steps of a man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. So it, it seems to me, this is all a doty note. We'll go back to the author. It seems to me that planning is something good and beneficial for us to do. We plan, but we seek God and we follow his way. Seeking God for a word or a phrase for the year to meditate on, to look up in scripture, and point us to the hand of God in our lives has been something that's been very good for me. A friend of mine called me, I think it was Christmas Eve, and she said, have you got your word for next year yet? I said, um, no, but now I do. The author continues with some ideas. She says, over the past few years, I've asked God to give me one word for the upcoming year. One word I can study. One word that perks my ears up every time it appears. One word that helps me discover the depth of God's heart. And one word that leads me closer to Christ. And do you know anyone here not want a way to draw closer to Jesus and discover his heart? Yes. Did any of you pick a word last year after we talked about it? I talk about it every year. I think we all do too, violinists. The previous ones this author had, if you want some ideas, are included listen, boy, and balloon. Oh, I remember. Years and years ago, before I did this little exercise, when the Lord was teaching me to be the one, to be his beloved, to allow myself to be loved. And that's when I took the Nick, Nick Doty. You see Doty Shalom. If you click on, me, click on my name, it's Doty Shalom. And I, I used the Nick Doty for years because Doty means beloved. Ani V, Doty V, Doty V. Is, I am my beloved's and he is mine. It's from Song of Solomon. So every time I sign online as Doty, it reminded me I am Doty. I am Doty. And then I picked the word shalom, which means peace. I have peace. I live in peace. I have the peace of God, which passes understanding regardless of what's going on. And I have a ring that I had made that says Shalom, and I wear it all the time. So the previous words, I picked passwords too that remind me of some truth I'm working on. Previous words that the author used were as listen, joy, beloved. Each word has drawn the author deeper into scripture and closer to Christ. Mine, if you want to know what some of my more recent words are, mine have been be intentional. Intentional was my one year. Choose. And I was learning that, yes, you know what? Our life is made one choice at a time. We choose Jesus, and after that, we choose to do it his way or not. We choose to follow rules, or we choose to disobey rules. We choose to help things, or we choose to unhealthy things. We choose to be kind, we choose to be mean. We choose to act on every thought that pops in our head, or we choose to <laughs> make it to God first. One year, my phrase was, I am is Emmanuel, and that has become almost a catchphrase for me after that year. When I can't understand something, when something's just too hard, and I think I'm going to just literally curl up in a little ball and go under the cover and never come out, I remember the way I am. God is I am, and he is Emmanuel. He is I am, is all we need, and he is Emmanuel, God with us, and he's that for you too. This year, my word was shift, which was interesting to say the least. I'm like, really, shift? 
So uh, the author continues. As we look up scripture that is relevant to our word, we will be drawn to other similar verses with perhaps a different slant. Later, I will show you how that worked for me so far this year. This year, I'm inviting you to ask God for your one word, the word God wants to use or phrase to make you more radiant like Jesus, to transform you into his image. The author gives a guide, and I'll share it. And I'll post the link at the end for anybody who wants it, if it's still online. But. She says, stay on. You might want a list of words, Bible words, or you might just, I don't use a list, but some people do. Before you begin reflecting on a list of words below, and I'm going to put them real quick. Spend some time in prayer, asking God what one word he wants to awaken you to during the coming year. Then, spend a few moments reflecting over the list of words below. Circle any that you feel compelled to discover more of or more about in your life. Just write down whatever comes into your mind or heart and we'll look at the list. Remember, I'm going to share the link at the end. So here's the list that she suggests. Jesus, Father, Spirit, Love, Joy, Hope, Grace, Peace, Kindness, Gentleness, Self-Control. You recognize where those are coming from. Patience, you, Goodness, Generosity, Gospel, Remember, Blessing. Church. What does church even mean? Time, holy, service, healing, life, today, prayer, disciple, follow, lead, forgive. That's a good one. Freedom, humility, faith, trust. Wholeness, restoration, redemption, renewal, rebuilding. Rebuild the ancient ruins, remember? You know why I did that? Shalom, faith, presence, sacrifice, change, unity, stillness, silence, gratitude, purpose, now, ask, abundance, family. Alive, purity, wisdom, deeper, go, yes, or any word or concept pops into your mind and you do this prayerfully if you decide to do it. Abba, abide, abound, Jesus, Messiah, and hope popped into mind just now when I was writing it. Step two. As if you were drawn to more than one word, write them all down. Take time to pray and ask God which one or how to combine them. He wants to echo in your life in the upcoming year. Which word would lead you more than information, but transformation? And this is key. We do not want information. Nobody here wants information for the sake of more information. We do need information. But all of transformation, we want information so that we can become transformed more and more into the image of Christ, which makes me then think of the word renewal. Step three, according to this author, is to write one word somewhere in large print. All caps. I don't do that. Consider posting this word near your desk or on your bathroom mirror or in a central place in your home. And step four, 
and five. Write out a asking God to draw you deeper to him and his word that he's given you. Oh, it's 2020, 2023. Ask, ask for your ears, your mind, your eyes, and your heart to be open to all the ways he speaks this year. And then if you've selected your one word for 2023, here are some ways to incorporate that into your daily life. If you do this, you see that word everywhere in scripture. You will hear people saying it. You will see it in random places. And it will draw you to God and to your Bible. Each day, invite God to speak to you about your word. Consider sharing your word with others and inviting them to identify their one word. Like a friend of mine that's been doing it for a long time called me and said, have you got your one word? No. Pray for each other to grow in this area of your life. Post your word in places you see often. On a piece of jewelry, a sticky note on your desk, your cell phone background computer background, laptop background. Each time you see it, pray for transformation in your heart and life. And then use an online tool like Bible Gateway to research your one word. Discover how scripture uses your word and what the Bible reveals about it. And one thing that's really neat about Bible Gateway and some of the other Bible apps or websites is that when you, if you, if for instance, my word this year is going to be abide, okay? So uh, there's a scripture that says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you will and it shall be given unto you. Well, when I find that verse in Bible Gateway, then over to the right-hand side, there's all these other verses that are similar to them. They might not use the word abide, so you can really spend a long time going off into the la-la land of the Bible, which is a wonderful la-la land to go to, and seeing, chaining one reference after another. Share what you're doing with others. Consider making a one-word journal or diary and keep track of when you encounter that one word through interactions, conversations, or readings. And I hope you, that inspired you as it did me some years ago. And now I'm going to share with you personally a little. My one word this year, I think, will be abide. I so very much need to abide at all times in the loving provision of God for every single moment. I need his direction. I need to trust him more. And I need to not try to fix things my way. That sent me to a verse, which will probably be my verse for the year as well, but it may not. It's John fifteen four, and it says... Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. And I wanted to see that in Amplified too. I do it this verse often in many translations. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, neither can you bear fruit, producing evidence of your faith, unless you remain in me. So you see that verse doesn't exactly have the word abide, but remain is the same thing. So now I can go into Bible Gateway and I can type the word remain and see what all verses have that word in it, as well as abide. I've already typed abide this morning. And here's another one about abide. Job and Job. There are those who rebel against the light. That means they disobey God. They do not know its ways, nor abide in its paths. Do you know there's a scripture that says, it's in the Old Testament, look to the right and look to the left. 
the ancient ways and walk in it. If you're walking in the ancient way, which means God's way, the truth, the way, the truth, and the life, then you will be abiding. And this one is cool. Psalm 15 begins with a question. I'm thinking about to memorize Psalm 15. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? It's stay on the ancient paths. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not, what is it, to inequity. Psalm 61.4. Yeah, I wish somebody would go find the ancient path scripture, because I forgot to pull it. Well, I didn't think of it until I was talking to y'all. Psalm 61.4 says, I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust. Oh. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. Anybody need to trust to remain in the shelter of his wings and trust him no matter what? No matter what anybody says, no matter what anybody does, no matter what does or doesn't happen, what you like or don't like about life. Psalm 91 is the safety of abiding in the presence of God. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What time is it? We don't need any more Bible verses, but there's tons more. So, um, as I read all of those, I was journaling, and I realized it's clear to abide in part me remain. So next, I would probably look up and ponder verses on remain, but not, of course, all in one day, and not without truly deeply meditating on each of those verses for as long as necessary. One verse might take a minute, one verse might take an hour, it might take three weeks. If I choose the bind, I will be watching for trials and that show me where I need to abide, trust, lean, totally rely on God deeply, and so on. This is just one way to not put Christmas back in a box, to keep Christ alive and in our awareness after secular Christmas has been packed away. So do you want to hear from my journal shift at the beginning of last year? Okay, I copied it out of there. Um, this kind of meditating. Last year, my word was in, when I'm writing in my journal, kind of talking to God. Last year, my word was embrace, and I do not feel ready to abandon that, but I'm adding shift as the new word. When life is overwhelming, we embrace the emotions, but then we turn to God from within whatever we are feeling. We go to Him. Accept his invitation to come to him just as we are, not trying to fix ourselves first. And as soon as we go or come, a shift occurs. Nothing changes, but everything is different. When from within our loneliness or any other strong emotion, we choose to draw near to Jesus. Indeed, a shift does take place. We shift our focus. We shift our position from self-aware alone to being aware of Jesus, of Emmanuel, God with us. We go from feeling we need to have it all together to knowing that we can literally climb into our Abba's lap. And then we shift into awareness of Emmanuel, God with us. And I remember something I had written about Emmanuel in 2013. And it says, hope for, and Emmanuel is our hope. Hope for living, hope in joyful moments, hope in sorrow, hope in life, hope in death, hope in life after death, hope to uphold, hope to calm, hope to restore, hope that lifts our eyes to Jesus when our heart is overwhelmed by life.
and then the next little bit, all this was all the first week of last year. So we shift gears. Like when a car goes up a hill or down a hill, it has to shift to a different gear. The car is still the same, but a shift has occurred in a moment and for a moment. In the spiritual realm, each time we remember to pause and turn and or return to awareness of Emmanuel, a shift happens. We are set free. We can release whatever it is and we can receive whatever God has. When the balloons or balls are released at a New Year's celebration, they rise or fall, but they are set free from whatever constrain them. Could it be that each time we go to Emmanuel, we are released and set free from constraints from places where we have been stuck emotionally or spiritually? And then when I was writing um, yesterday, today, and thinking about abide and um, the song, the violinist, we're about ready for you, violinist. I wrote, thank you, God, that I am not alone, even if I feel alone. I think my word will be abide next year. When I need to shift or embrace, those are last year's words the year before. When I need to shift or embrace this year and last year's words, that will only happen as I abide. So Abba, help me abide, help me to live and move and have my very being in awareness of your love. Help me shift fear and negative and embrace the fact that you are with me all the time and loving me as well. So Father, we do love you. Lord, I ask you to be with Christ Walk, Corndeo, I, the violinist, Trinity Shalom, and T.G. who's left, who were in here tonight. Lord, be with them in the coming year. Help us all not to put Christmas Christ back in a box. Help us to keep ourselves securely under the shelter of your wings as we rest in the sure and certain promise that not just on Christmas Day, but every day, you are Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, your turn, Alanis.
Thank <laughs> you.